Bro, this is a delay. Is it can you hear it now? No. You can't hear it? I can't hear it. That's weird. It says live. Push it through. The show is live. I think you're active. Hello and welcome to Diamond Gems. I'm your host, Jacob Coates, and I am joined by my brother and co-host, Isaac Coates. Isaac, what are, you, what are you sipping there? You got like, got like a big metal Starbucks cup there? Yeah. You got I, something pink and fruity inside? I, well, I mean water. I literally have water in it. Hmm. But yeah, I just have a nice Starbucks cup. That's what I have. I earned this cup, Jacob. I earned it. Did you steal it? I cashed in my points. Okay. I'm I'm that's, an honest, hard working individual. Good for you. You've never Thank stole you. anything in your life, have never, you? Never, never. Perfect. Uh well Wait, are you accusing if, me of something? No, of course not. I would mm-hmm. never. Mm-hmm. Uh if this is your first time listening, welcome. Uh if you are going to enjoy this episode throughout the process, please like and subscribe and leave a kind review. And Isaac, turn your headphones down. I can hear myself. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is things go smoothly often as they are so far to start this show, and I think you're really gonna like it. So yeah, make sure you leave us a nice review, and uh, or we a have a YouTube. Review if you hate us, leave us no. a review either way. No, don't leave us a Actually, poor review. Yeah. Just uh, just fuck off. Just leave. No, nah, and don't on. ever come back. If and you don't... hate our shit, don't leave a review. Just slide in our DMs. We'll get yeah, you tell on the us. Show. Yeah, talk some shit. Yeah, you can talk we shit like, in our we DMs. Like, yeah, and then maybe we'll put you on the show because we, we want uh, some debate. Our favorite episode of all time to do was the Barry Bonds debate. And that mm-hmm. shit got heated. So Yeah, so we you could come on the show and tell us why we suck. And we like Greg too. Yeah. So that's true. We don't we No mercy for like him you. though. Yeah. Uh what was I gonna say? Oh, if you wanna slide in our DMs at Diamond Gems Podcast on Instagram or at Shape by Sports. And yeah. we have a YouTube page as well. Shaped by sports. Shaped by sports. So uh, go check that out if you like video content. But today, if you read the caption or the the title of this episode, then you know that this is the new rule proposals for 2024 episode. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk. There's, as as everyone knows, or most people know, anyways. Uh, as I get away from the mic, I can hear myself again. As most people know. Um, in 2023, there was a few new rules that were introduced. Uh, there was a pitch clock, some shift restrictions, and, uh, bigger bases came into play. Now this all happened basically after, uh, a year, maybe even a more than a year of testing some of these rules in the minor leagues. And, uh, yeah, now they're in the MLB, they're happening. And, um, if you listen to MLB, at all or or watch it on tv you might be getting bombarded with marketing of the new rules um i don't know isaac if you have experienced this but i've listened to a couple games on audio through the mlb app and their ads talk about the new rules and uh they're really starting to annoy me if i'm being honest um we can get into that in a minute but first of all I think we may have touched on it slightly in another episode, but assuming that we got new people here, um, what are your thoughts so far on the new rules? Honestly, the ratings too, I'm all positive about it. Um, At first, I didn't like it, especially in spring training. The pitch clock stuff, they were really struggling with it. It was concerning, uh, but it seemed to stabilize, and I'm really enjoying the pace of the games. Although I do I do think the live experience is almost hindered in a way because you're you can be there from anywhere. It can be a two hour game. And we're used to seeing like a three hour minimum game. I remember the second game of the C, of the of the homestand of the Jays home opening week. Um that game would have been like two hours exactly. And if you're making a day out of it, if we drive from an hour and a half away 
and it could have been if it didn't go into extras it just felt like okay we made a five hour trip essentially with all the traffic <laughs> to watch two hours of baseball uh you're not getting as much bang for your buck i guess even though it's the same and the game. idea that is being proposed is that it's still the same amount of baseball because it's you know it's it's still you still have to get all of the outs and play nine innings but the difference is that there's less dead time. So that's yeah. what they're trying to cut out. But I see what you're saying for like the live experience. And it's interesting too, because like just talking Blue Jays here, they put in on like a whole crazy amount of changes to the stadium this year to introduce some bars and like social areas and stuff like that. And basically if there's less dead time in between pitches, the ga- the whole experience is shorter so there's actually less time for people to enjoy those areas. And people have mentioned too, it's kind of interesting that they did that when you consider that, you know, now, obviously, if people are only there for, you know, two hours instead of three or whatever, there's going to be like less sales for for food and beverage and everything during the the that process too. So yeah, but- it's interesting that MLB kind of chose to sacrifice that for like the more the, the greater and, good of the game. Yeah, but it's working. It is working. Um, a lot of the teams have shifted to selling alcohol throughout the entire game, which essentially reverses that whole idea because you can buy as much alcohol as you want um, up until the end of the game now, which mm-hmm. really, if you put it, that could be the seventh inning stoppage but from previous years. So really, if... An organization really wants to be back to what they were selling wise, food and beverage. They could just keep selling. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Toronto won't probably won't do that because Canadian restrictions are uh, seemingly tighter for stupid reasons sometimes. For like drinking um, and driving stuff. Yeah, but to be fair, if you have to have two innings to sober up, then you, you probably shouldn't, be, shouldn't driving. be driving home anyways. Exactly. That like, was it's point, not. That you're was not going to get sobered up in two innings. So. Like what, it it I don't understand really the sense. point of stopping alcohol sales at a certain point. Like, if you are too drunk, where you have to sober up in order to drive again, you probably should not be on the road. Yeah, and like two of the shortened time innings that they have in the MLB now is not going to be adequate time. That could be like twenty minutes. Like, yeah, you need hours to sober yeah. up. Um, yeah. as far as the time goes, kind of switching a little bit, I really do like the experience watching on TV mm. much more now. Cause there's 162 games. Okay. Like the playoffs, I'm ready to have this conversation again, but I don't want to ever have the conversation again until then, because we just beat the shit out of this. Like, like you were saying earlier, all the MLB ads are about this. Now we're talking about it again. We've talked about it multiple times. Um, mm-hmm. but as far as 162 games, it's nice to just watch baseball for two and a half hours and then that's it every night yeah i I agree i don't i I really like the tv experience i had a great time i've been to one game so far this year and truthfully i had a great time but i'm also not someone that goes around to the social areas and gets drinks and stuff like that like i pretty much just stay in my seat and watch the game so to me it's like it's great i i didn't find a difference um there is potentially some revisions to the to the new rules, Isaac. Uh, people have been saying, uh, at least on the Blair and Barker show in Toronto, I have yes. heard them say a couple times that they think that there might be a couple seconds take it, getting taken off the clock again. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that is extremely unnecessary. I already think the pace is, is quick. We already have about a violation a game. I don't think you want more than that. Why yeah. do you want the game to I be shortened? I don't think they're going to do that. I, I, I don't know who who said that. And my theory is it was one of them that actually came up with that idea. Because that seems like a genius early. idea from them. So, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I hope that's yeah. not the case. I think that, if anything, I had said maybe add a couple seconds because uh, it seems fast. And why why do anything at this point? Like, I think that's exactly viewership is way up. It. They've they've gotten what they've want. They've achieved. They're achieving what they wanted to achieve. There's no necessity to change anymore unless it's not working. 
And mm. the only way it's not working is if pitchers are constantly getting violations. So the one thing that needs to change is uh, some umpires are stupid and they don't have any feel. Not honoring the standing ovation moments. They're like running the pitch clock and giving the batters violations occasionally. And some um, most umpires are okay with it, and some are stupid. So I'm just like, fuck you guys. I want to get out of here, get my money. I work a union job. I don't need to do work. So they're just like, quick, let's finish it up. I don't care about your ovation. I don't care about your moment. Yeah, give me That's what needs to change. That's, Robot that's umpires. a good point. Uh, in terms of shift restrictions, Isaac, they you've seen, not that often, I would say, but a couple times now I've seen the... People try to kind of work around the infield shift restrictions. And Successfully. Move, like an outfielder over um, and basically have two outfielders and like a rover that plays a little deep. Do you think that that's, uh, they're going to take away that, no. like the ability to shift in the outfield? No, because they didn't, they didn't really take away the ability to shift. They said two guys need to be on the, on the dirt on each side of the field. So you have guys still playing at the middle. They didn't say anything about the outfielders. Outfielders can play wherever you, they want. If there's two outfielders only, like it, you have a better chance if you get it if you hit the ball in the outfield to get a hit. So I don't know. And it, why would they change it? Batting average is also up, mm-hmm. which is what they wanted. Yeah, more so balls. So you, you've achieved that. So why are you going to restrict it further? Like obviously teams are going to be smart with it. So mm-hmm. let that be. There's a, we're not, we don't, like, that was already a controversial thing. People were like, well, they should be able to play wherever they want to play. And, I mean, you can say that because it's been like that forever, but in football, there's set pieces. Like, it is what it is. Like, some sports have set pieces, and baseball is becoming that with a little bit of flexibility. And why take, get rid of all the flexibility? It's good the way it is right now, in my opinion. Agreed. Last thing, Isaac, for possible revisions. Uh, they're testing in the minors right now. I think it's just the Atlantic League, League, which is basically this league that almost no one ever makes it to the show from, but they do a ton of uh, testing and weird experimental rules. And the new rule proposals or ideas anyways that we're going to get into are all being tested in the Atlantic League right now. Um, but the, league, the revision that would possibly happen next year is uh only one disengagement allowed for pitchers which oh, instead of two and i i agree quick done it's it's stupid two is already pretty uh it's like tight. it's keeping it tight and concise yeah i agree to be fair they technically have three like it, it, it's two and then they can still pick them off, but if they don't get them, get them out, them. it's a yeah. They, yeah. I, and I like that. I, I still think there's there's a lot of strategy in it. One is like too tight, and look, the stolen bases are already way up again, and that's great. But do we need to see five people looking like Ricky Henderson every <laughs> year? No, we yeah. there's one Ricky Henderson for a reason. Mm-hmm. And there's a guy. There's like a few guys in the league that have stolen double digit stolen bases already. So do you know who they are? Asturio Ruiz has 10, I believe. Oh, my AL Rookie of the Year. Um, I think Corbin Carroll is up there. Nice. Your Um, boy? He got hurt the other day, I think. He's fine. Oh, no. Um, Where is Anthony Volpe at? Uh, He was at... I have him on my team. He's at like 8 or 9, I think, actually. He's close. There's a few guys that are really close, um, seemingly the younger generation of players. Love it. We love to see it. And I'm sure there's other guys too. Those are the ones I've noticed because I have stock in them. I was interested in the prospects coming into this year. So, um, mm-hmm. but it's nice to see. I like it the way it is right now. And there's a couple changes going into this year that I was concerned about, and I've been relieved a little bit to see it being implemented. I still have concerns with the pitch clock in the playoffs, though. Mm-hmm. Me too. Those high Big intensity moments, moments uh, like the stare offs, I don't want them to be rushed. It's good to let them breathe. I I honestly wouldn't be opposed to there being a pitch clock, and I think that it's inevitable that there will be a pitch clock in the playoffs. If there was a time to like add to it, I would say like in yeah. the in the postseason maybe add five seconds onto uh, onto both 
book locks. Yeah. And for anybody and for anybody that thinks that you shouldn't change the rules going into the playoffs, we already do. We do that in every sport. Overtime rules in hockey switch to continuous overtime. Um, and it's baseball, way better. And like baseball, okay, I, I like in the regular season actually the runner on second, and I understand people not liking that one. Um, but the runner on second rule goes away, so you have a blank slate in the in extra innings. So things change every year in the playoffs for every sport. So True. if the you add a few aren't seconds, just the rules. Yeah, and there's less games in the playoffs. Like, why? I, I there's no harm in adding a little bit of time, make these games a little bit longer, um, because I some playoff games were too long, and some of them were five hours, but. I don't want them to all be two hours and 39 minutes because they're still going to be that. They're going to mm-hmm. be the same as they were in the regular season unless they increase the pitch clock time. I agree. And you know the umpires aren't going to have any feel, even if it's a postseason. So you don't want to put it in their hands too much. I think it would be a good idea to add some extra time there. Um, yeah, the one thing I'll, I'll say, though, about the marketing is, I like I said, I don't even hate the new rules. I actually like I've I've kind of come to like them, Uh, but I keep hearing all of this, like, you asked for it, you got it, this is what you wanted, we gave it to you, and it made me think that, like, there's been a couple times where I have been annoyed about the rules, and I heard that in, like, the next commercial break, and it, like, really rubbed me the wrong way. And I think that, like, there's, you can see in the comments of, like, posts and stuff, there's a lot of people that are still hating the new yeah. rules. And I think that when you make your, your um, like, your marketing and your messaging centric around, like, this is what you wanted, like, putting it on the fan, I, I have to think that that kind of drives a wedge between people and the game if they already are in the camp of yeah. not liking it so um, yeah i agree if i, I could give if, if i could give a tip of marketing advice a piece of Shut marketing advice up. to them it'd be just stop that it's it's happening people know it's happening you're putting it in the ears of people that are already listening to your product yeah we don't need to keep hearing it just cut it off now it's we're a month into the season end it please yeah and it's not like i don't know why they're pretending like they're marketing to core baseball fans because if you ask like core baseball fans, diehard baseball fans that have always been here, I, I bet 80% of the people were not pleased with all these changes. So what their intention was was to grow the game because their numbers were down over the years and they wanted to attract new audiences. And I, the TikTok, the social media thing, they want to be quicker. They want less lesser attention spans. They wanted people like that to be interested in the game. So don't say this is what we asked for when this is what you were doing to try to attract new people. This Mm -hmm. is nothing to do with baseball fans. This is everything to do with taking other fans and bring taking other sports fans and bringing them to this game. It's because your demographics like 60. You wanted to make it younger. I went to the, I went to the Jays game on Sunday with my friend who hasn't been to a Jays game in years and the first thing she pointed out, and it was Junior Jays Day, so it was the first kids' day of the year. And she was like, "The one thing I don't like about baseball is all these old white, these old men just here." And I was like, "Yeah," and they're all have their little scoring. It's like all these old men are still coming to these games, and that was that is your main demographic. I guarantee you, those people were not asking for these changes. They want to take their time to score their game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that also. Yeah, no. Just no, not, I'm not, not saying there's on, anything wrong with it. It was just like people. it was just an observation. Like you go to a Raptors game, you go to a Leafs game, you don't just see just old men just like with their score sheets ready to go. And the, yeah, it's just like it's there's true. the culture of baseball was just vastly different. Yeah, it's always kind of been like a laid back, like you go yeah. to the ballpark and enjoy the day and like it's that kind of experience. And I think that I, I've always liked that about baseball, but in some areas, like I understand why people that aren't big baseball fans find that kind of stuff boring. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I just think you don't want to completely take away all of these things from people that like, like you, the game of baseball has been successful over the years for a reason. Like you've, if people like the product, 
you just want more people to like the product. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I just don't like the pushy marketing. It's really pissing me off. <laughs> and like they, they, I mean, they have like Sebastian Maniscalco, like doing commercials and stuff who already irritates me. So I don't then know who do, that is. That's they don't don't even bother looking him up. He's a very popular uh, stand-up comedian who I find completely yeah. unfunny. Oh, they had a. Uh... I like the marketing where they had Brian Cranston in. Yeah. I like that, that commercial. One that one is a good ad. There you go. Just because Brian Cranston, he makes everything better. Yeah, it's just Walter White. That's who he is to me still, to this day. That's all. Um, mm-hmm. Do you watch golf, Jacob? Do you like? Do you enjoy watching golf? Uh, honestly, I don't really watch it very much. But honestly, okay, the main reason I don't really watch it is, one, too much baseball happening. Yeah. And uh, playoff hockey happening right now, too. Yeah. I actually would tend to watch it more once it baseball becomes the only sport happening, then I kind of will Fair. get more into into golf because I yeah I, I that, can't really handle more than yeah. two sports at a time. But it's that same laid back thing, and now baseball is like fast is a lot more fast paced. But it was that laid back thing that you can just enjoy sitting back and mm-hmm. watching. Um, yeah, but I I mean I, for me it was like I haven't watched much golf since that live golf stuff happened. I hate both sides now because you just drained the top players in the world. And it's not like golf had the most product. elite golfers in the world because you're only targeting one demographic. It's the same as hockey. You don't have the best potential athletes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like, yeah, I don't know. I was trying to get to something with that. And now I completely forgot. So it's cool. Who cares? It's bringing Every it back now to and then baseball. we go on a little tangent like that. That yeah. just happens. Uh, well, let's, let's refocus then. And let's talk about, uh, the rules that are being tested in the minor leagues right now. And I'm yes. going to tell you what they are. I don't know if you actually know about any of them yet, and uh, but you can just give me your thoughts on them. So this is the most major one that's happening. Again, all of these changes are happening in the Atlantic League. If you ever want to like look into the Atlantic League, it's actually pretty fun. It's basically just this fucking test tube league that the MLB has um, where they just try out a bunch of different weird things. And it's, uh, yeah. Anyways, so basically the the proposed double hook DH rule um, is a rule where if your starting pitcher fails to get through five innings, you lose your designated hitter for the rest of the game. So basically, if your starting pitcher can't go five innings, your DH spot in your lineup becomes the pitcher spot in the lineup, which means you either have to have a pitcher hit or you have to pinch hit for the pitcher, which takes the pitcher out of the game, uses up a bench piece. Um, being tested in the minor leagues right now, Isaac, what are your thoughts? Um, you see how many pitcher injuries there are within the first five innings? Luis Garcia pitched through eight pitches yesterday before leaving the game. Like, really, a freak accident could happen, and you lose your DH because of it? it's so unnecessary like we love the universal dh we they literally brought in the universal dh to increase offense so now all of a sudden they're like let's take it out again let's get rid of the dh if the pitcher sucks it's like no why are we doing this this whole like that is a stupid idea i don't think that'll ever actually come to the mlb but this is this just counters every single change they've made in the five in the past five years. It was like, let's go back to 1901 for a second. Get rid of the DH. So that's actually, I, I love that. You basically covered everything I, wanted, I was going to say. But one, to me, increases injury risk in a couple of ways. One, you are removing the designated hitter for a pitcher spot if they don't go five innings. So basically, you're trying to push guys that maybe should come out of the game a little harder and a little further so that you don't lose your DH. That's one way they can get hurt. The other way is the pitchers actually have to hit. And now you have hitters in the box or pitchers in the box taking at bats, potentially putting themselves at risk of, you know, hurting themselves on the base paths, on a swing, getting hit by a pitch. That that was one of the main reasons for putting in the universal DH in, in in tandem with like also increasing offense was player safety you were trying to keep pitchers on the field more often you're getting rid of that it also the other thing i don't understand is a team is already struggling if your pitcher comes out early 
you're automatically at a disadvantage in that game. He's either coming out early because he got shelled or because he got hurt. And either way, it makes the team have to scramble to either try and climb back into the game or to, you know, like bring in more pitchers to try and get through the game and you're draining your bullpen and putting more pitchers out there that you didn't maybe want in the game. And it just, it it makes it even harder for the team to climb back. So basically, you're making it so that, like if you take a DH away, it's harder for that team that might is probably trailing by a significant margin already. It's way harder for them to climb back in the game because they're missing one of their best hitters. It doesn't make sense. Like you said, um, like you want more offense in the game. Think about like Shohei Otani. Like people come from so far to see Shohei Otani and imagine he has a bad day on the mound, doesn't get through four innings, and now he, the DH, is removed from the game as well. So people maybe got to see him take one or two at-bats, and then he's gone for the rest of the day. It is the most idiotic rule I've ever seen proposed. You know who and I feel like... for that reason, I don't think it's going to actually make it You know terrible. who I think proposed this rule? People who missed the no, NL? No, no. Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith proposes he hates Shohei Otani. He hates Shohei Otani. <laughs> he hates the fact that it's not an American man that is not the face that is the face of baseball. He hates that idea. He says he can't even speak the language, and he hates it. So he wants him off the hook. He wants him out of the game. And That's an excellent point. So I think he's he had input in that rule, and he's never watched a baseball game in his life. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a good theory. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we can move on from that dumb one. Uh, let us know. Slide in our DMs. Let us know what you think of that rule. Are we are we out of our minds? Do you think that this is a sick idea? I think if you think it's a sick idea, you're kind of sick in the head. But I will I will stop watching baseball. I promise. I'm done. It would become it would become a farce. Like yeah. it's just comedy at that point if you if you start bringing in rules like that like go watch a savannah bananas game if that's the, the type real. of baseball you want to watch um <laughs> all right well how about this one this one is also kind of crazy and savannah oh, banana ish have you seen this one yeah. the proposed designated pinch runner so basically every team can choose to use one of their roster spots to have a guy in the lineup that can be or not in the lineup sorry a, like a bench player that just kind of sits on the sidelines and then can be subbed in as a pinch runner whenever you want. Thoughts? <laughs> Do we need thoughts on this one? Which one is dumber? The 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 double hook rule? Or oh, I think the double hook rule is stupid. I think that one's worse. But why? It's like, okay... Uh, maybe they want to increase jobs. They want to be like, okay, well, Billy Hamilton actually has a place on offense at this point. It's true. But then do they get to play defense? No. What the fuck? It's just one designated pinch runner. That's stupid. So basically, you would inter- I think you'd like basically introduce a new position. Which is just designated runners. Okay, but and you, you know would what basically this does. have you would have like you could hire like Usain Bolt to just come in and just run the bases for you. You know this kills all stats that have ever existed. Like for example, Alejandro Kirk on the on the Blue Jays will never he'll get on base and he'll never run. He'll never he'll have run zero again. Run he will never score a run unless except he has for a home his run. home runs. Yeah. So he might have twenty runs in a season, but his OBP is like three fifty. Like, that's not physically possible. That's so stupid. <laughs> like, this just kills all stats. Like, okay, Big Papi Ortiz, how could he win, like, a triple crown with, like, RBIs, home runs, and runs? You, how could you do that? He couldn't, because he would have he 50 been runs. Faster. He should have like, taken more steroids. Bruh, why? Why did they do this? Whose idea was this one? The more um, I'm thinking about this one, at least this one actually, like, this one's worse, because it impacts... Like hit baseball's hit baseball history, the stats. Like, it's a good point. I didn't. Even th- I didn't even think of that. Why are we doing this? Like, I I get For it. Fun. We like stolen bases. That's why you keep a guy on the on the on bait. I mean, on the bench that can run and pinch hit in a high lever and pinch run in a high leverage situation. 
Why can't he just keep doing that? And then go back on the will. bench. I'm kind of thinking that both of these rules are not going to get pushed through, but they're just kind of fun to talk about. I don't know, man. The rate they push through rules now, I'm like, uh Okay, so if they introduce both of these rules next year, like, are you, are you actually, do you think you would stop watching baseball? Um, are there any other summer sports? No. That's kind of like baseball's oh, cricket. biggest thing. You like get into, into cricket. cricket? Yep. You probably have to watch pre-recorded games because, like, so many of them happen in, like, India and, like, New Zealand and New Australia Zealand is 18 hours ahead, so really it's only a six-hour difference. So, or, really? wait, 18, yeah. So, I could watch those. So like just six-hour time difference. There we go. Okay. Cricket. We're watching cricket next year. Take take notes, out. MLB. You're losing ver- two very diehard fans. To cricket. If, if you push these rules through. To cricket. Yeah. They don't the fuck game we the don't rules. Understand. Nobody understands the rules. In cricket. Hey, that's not true. I the had peop- people, when I was in New Zealand, I, there was Do one you understand that kept the rules explaining of cricket? it. Oh, no, I don't. But he, like, fully <laughs> understood them. And they it's weren't like that the, complex. But I didn't it, understand really, I tried to explain baseball to him. Same thing. Didn't register. Okay. It's like, that comes with experience. I'm like, you're telling me something I'm blind to. Like, I'm not going to absorb that information. It, I don't think it was that complicated at all. I genuinely feel like part, one of the main reasons I've never actually, like, really looked into cricket is because I was always told that it's, like, super confusing. And I yeah. was like, that that was, like, a barrier to entry There's for me. There's two variations like, I'm not gonna get in. I don't, I don't want to like read us like study a rule book to try and figure out how this works apparently there's two variations of the game though there's a timed version like a shortened version yeah. where you have a set like number of i don't know what they are like are equivalent to innings i guess or runs whatever and then there's a the one that this feels like it, it could technically just go on forever <laughs> so um yeah I, i'd probably be a fan of the the timed ones i don't think i could watch an endless game it's actually wild that there's just games that like last a couple days and shit. And MLB's like, we got to keep it under three hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. The, the difference in markets. Yeah. We have sure. too much going on is what we have. Mm-hmm. All right, Isaac. Now we get to one that I is the, it's, this is the first one that I'm like, Oh my God, please, please God, let this happen now, tomorrow, put, make it a rule. Strike and ball challenges. Have you seen this? <laughs> no. You haven't? No. Okay. Well, I'll send you a video after. I, I can share it on our stories too. But essentially, you know in tennis yes. where they the ball the cool is... cool visual. Yeah. You get... it's Exactly. It's, it's like in the, the Hawkeye te- technology or whatever where if you disagree with an umpire's call... Also, they're called umpires in tennis, so that's seamless... Uh, Perfect. <laughs> if if you disagree with an umpire's call, you can challenge it, and it goes to this Hawkeye thing that shows on the screen in the stadium, and shows if it hit the line or if it's in or out, basically. So this technology exists for baseball now, where you could challenge a ball or a strike call, and it goes up on the screen just like in tennis with the Hawkeye technology and tells you ball or strike. <laughs> Basically it can only come the, the challenge can only come from pitcher catcher or a hitter. And it has mm. to happen right away. I've seen uh, a video of it happening in real time because this is taking place in the minor leagues. I can't remember which league this one's actually taking place in. Um, but basically the, the hitter uh, takes a pitch it's a called strike he disagrees with it he immediately taps on his on his helmet to challenge it it goes up on the screen you see it you see all the fans react because it was actually a ball count resets to to whatever it was now that it's a ball instead of a strike and the game moves on i love it i look my my only thing though is there has to be a set limit of challenges like a set a hard limit of challenges and if you win it you still lose a challenge you should have like four or five challenges max but you every challenge you still lose one like you shouldn't if you challenge something like you do in regular baseball or in football and you win the challenge you keep your challenge you should not keep your challenge or you keep your time out and in, in, uh, i feel like this is one where you can have like you could maybe do like a challenge and in inning type of thing yeah 
something like that. But do it quick, and you do not get that challenge back if you win it. Because it, they're going to so, challenge every single call. Yeah. And the, the thing is, though, Isaac, it's not, like, as slow of a process as when, you know, there's the way they challenge things now, where they have to put on the headsets and, like, call to well, yeah. uh, to New York or whatever. It doesn't do that. It happens in real time right there. So there's definitely the opportunity for there to be more challenges and, like, not really impact the pace of game very much. But uh, umpires still have those little clicker things. They're going to have to reset that when they call it wrong. Yeah, I think this would probably lead to more fucked up uh, counts. For sure. <laughs> yeah, even though it's on the screen for them, they will also fuck up their little clicker. That's wrong sometimes, though. That actually happened in the Jays game. The other yeah, day. true. Um, I like... I, I like when they uh, accidentally call third strike when it's a second strike. Those are some of my favorite moments in baseball when they just ring them up on strike two. And then everyone's like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> and then the umpire is embarrassed as hell. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. I love when that happens. Because it's Good such stuff. a blatant mistake that it's like, eh. yeah. So, Isaac, would you prefer this strike challenge? Would you, first of all, would you want this, like, implemented immediately? Yes absolutely like tomorrow start it yeah i agree i think that it's amazing that when i saw the video i was literally so excited i'm yeah. like this is exactly what people have been asking for um so let me ask you this would you prefer the challenge system like this or do you think it's just time we just go straight up robo ump okay i'm gonna time out because the only reason i want robo umps is because umpires are disrespectful as hell for not granting the whole standing ovation thing they're like give you a strike fuck you you don't get you don't get to celebrate so the robo ump would be worse because it would be like an automatic thing is contingent on umpires not being dickheads for once and maybe the tear down of the union um their union they should be able to get fired um so but yes i want umpires and that uh the strikeout challenges that sounds lit. The strike challenges, sorry. Yeah. When I saw the the headline for strike challenge, I was like, oh no. I was thinking it was some form of like a mini game within the game. Oh, I was no. thinking this was like the show, just play <laughs> some mini games. They don't even. I don't even know if they have mini games, but like yeah. That was MVP like, baseball. MVP they, baseball had mini games. The yeah. show has home run derbies. Yeah. 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 I am so for this. I honestly think that this is like this is the rule. When you talk about like people that have been. Like, people have been asking for it, MLB. This is what we've been asking for. We've been like, get better umpires. Yeah. Well, they don't exist, okay? Well, they do exist, probably. People don't want robo-umpires because it... Well, yeah, I guess you're right. To a certain extent, there is better umpires out there. But we have to understand, too, and as former umpires ourselves, we know you cannot call every pitch perfectly. This is such a good compromise. I, I love this idea, yeah. and I hope it sticks. A good day for an umpire is like ninety five percent correct, isn't it? Like ninety seven percent. Yeah, that gets rid of this. Gets rid of that three percent wrong call. Like simple, mm-hmm. done. And it also just like it. I didn't look up the the umpire scorecard the other day from the Jays game, but I I accounted five runs in that game that were partially at fault of the umpire. Ugh. Where strikeouts could have ended. You know the what's inning. funny though, because I feel like you only counted five runs that Seattle ended up scoring, but you didn't count how many runs the Jays scored because of that same thing. Because your it's Blue true. Jays bias is I'm pure. Super biased. So, can you really say that we're not a Blue Jays podcast? That don't show your bias like that, because I'm pro Seattle. Like Chris Bassett still gave up a grand slam either way, regardless. Sure. And he still threw 35 pitches in that first inning regardless. It's not like he was dealing in that first inning. No. It was he was still struggling with the pitch calling when you're on a time limit. And to be fair, watching him live, I got a whole new appreciation for him not actually like being ready to go. He stands off the back of the mound for like 10 seconds. And then he goes through his eight pitches. To figure it out. So, I'm... He hasn't made the adjustment. That's on him. That's So, fair. those borderline strikes, if there were strikes, I couldn't see from my angle, of course. He still gave up a grand slam, and it still looked ugly. So, it happens. That's baseball. And one day, he, and a lot of times, he'll get generous calls. It balances out. Law of averages. 
Okay, I looked up the umpire scorecard for that game that I was talking about, and the overall favor was uh, plus 0.89 runs for Seattle. So basically one run for Seattle. They won by two runs, so they, they won fair two. and square. Done. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I counted five, but uh, I guess that's a little little bias playing. So in that the, means the Seattle also... Uh, lost four runs then if you counted five Blue Jays runs. I mean, four ru- Blue Jays runs against. Then there Yeah, was it just seemed there was there was Seattle like three strikeout against. calls that went against the Blue Jays that would have ended the inning. And then when the inning didn't end, a whole bunch of bad shit happened right after that accounted to five runs. There was know, basically, man. they scored like five runs with two outs after strikeouts happened. That was what I'm I was... All, I'm calling for in stadiums to see the little strike zone thing too so we can see what you're looking at because really all it looked like in that first inning was bassett just having a horrible inning and then capping it off at the grand slam we didn't see that they were strikes we didn't know that these were close we just thought he was completely shit in the bed and he actually obviously got some strikeouts he got five outs in that inning and it didn't look like that live absolutely not Mm -hmm. so I'm calling for the strike challenge, but also to display the little zone and where the pitches end up on the big screen so people can boo more at the umps. Yeah. So then we can also empathize and feel bad for our pitcher when he gets screwed over. Perfect. There you go. Done. There you have it, folks. I think that does it, Isaac. We have no more rules to touch on. We ended on the best possible rule, I think. and uh, The only good rule. (laughs) <laughs> all of the other ones can can go to hell uh thank you so much for listening to this episode of diamond gems again if you enjoyed the episode please leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to this or like the video um if this is on youtube this one probably will be on youtube and uh yeah make sure you follow us on instagram at diamond gems podcast at shape by sports and uh,